Hey everyone, I recently upgraded to the new LG OLED G5, and let me tell you. This TV is insanely bright, pushing over 2400 nits. With that kind of peak brightness, it can display most content without any need for tone mapping. But despite that, I wanted to make this video to show you why using Dolby Vision still matters, even on a display this powerful. First, let me give you a quick overview of how Dolby Vision is encoded on Blu-ray discs. There are two types you'll find under Profile 7, MEL and FEL. MEL stands for Minimal Enhancement Layer, and FEL stands for Full Enhancement Layer. So Profile 7 on Blu-ray disc is a dual layer system that includes one HD or 10 video layer and one Dolby Vision Enhancement Layer. With MEL discs, the enhancement layer is encoded as a 1080p HEVC stream, but it doesn't actually contain any real video. It's just a static green or gray frame. The important part is the RPU, or Reference Picture Unit, which carries the dynamic tone mapping metadata. That's what enables accurate shot-by-shot -shot or frame-by-frame -frame tone mapping on the display. FEL discs, on the other hand, are more advanced. The enhancement layer is still a 1080p HEVC stream, but this time it contains real image data. Specifically, the 12-bit essence and any differences between the 10-bit HD or base and the original 12-bit HD or master. That includes any difference in brightness, color, black levels, shadow detail, grain, and more. When you play a FEL disc on a compatible player, it uses dual 10-bit decoders to reconstruct the full 12-bit master by combining the HD or 10 base layer with the Dolby Vision Enhancement layer. This reconstructed video is then sent to the display along with the dynamic tone mapping metadata from the RPU. Just like the minimal enhancement layer, your TV uses this metadata to map the image accurately based on its own capabilities. Now, if you're wondering why they don't just encode everything as a single 12-bit HEVC stream, there's a good reason for that. Currently, there are no consumer 12-bit decoders on the market. To work around this limitation, Dolby developed a dual-layer system that uses two 10-bit decoders to reconstruct a 12-bit image on existing hardware. But here's the catch, most non-Blu-ray players, like the NVIDIA Shield, Apple TV, Fire Stick, or Zidu aren't equipped with dual decoders. That means they can't properly decode Dolby Vision Profile 7, especially the full enhancement layer. As a result, these devices only play the HD or 1.0 base layer, while ignoring the Dolby Vision enhancement layer. When the 12-bit master, and the HD or 10 encode are at different brightness level, this leads to a problem, the dynamic tone mapping metadata, which is meant for the reconstructed 12-bit video, is still being sent, but since the player isn't decoding the full 12-bit stream, the metadata no longer matches the actual video signal luminance. This mismatch causes the display to apply incorrect tone mapping, usually making the image look dimmer than intended especially in scenes brighter than your display capabilities. So, unless your player is capable of properly decoding both layers, you're not getting the full Dolby Vision experience, and in some cases, it can even look worse than plain HD or 10. In the Dolby Vision Profile 7 encoding workflow, there's another important detail that often gets overlooked. When creating a disc, the colorist or studio can choose to tone a map the HD or 10 base layer to a specific peak brightness, typically 600 or 1000 nits. This is done to ensure decent compatibility with mid-range HD or 10-only TVs that can't reach high brightness levels. But here's the key, when that HD or 10 layer is tone mapped and capped, any additional luminance and highlight detail from the original 12-bit master gets moved into the full enhancement layer. That layer holds the brightness, contrast, and dynamic range that goes beyond the tone mapped HD or 10 layer. So if your player or display doesn't support Dolby Vision Profile 7 with FEL decoding, you're stuck viewing just the tone mapped HD or 10 version that is capped to either 600 or 1000. You lose all that extra headroom. The full luminance that was present on the mastering monitor when the colorist created the 12-bit HD or master. Only with Dolby Vision decoding, using both the HD or 10 base and enhancement layers, can the full 12-bit dynamic range be restored as intended. And this matters even more on a high-end TV, like the G5 with 2,500 nits of peak brightness. Because if your display is capable of showing that level of brightness detail, Dolby Vision is the only way to unlock it from a disc encoded this way. That's why Dolby Vision isn't just helpful on lower-end TVs, it's actually even more impactful on premium displays. It is possible to decode both layers and reconstruct the 12-bit master on a computer, but this process requires ray encoding.
Check out the link to my Dolby Vision scripts for more info. On a related note, Dolby Vision streaming uses Profile 5, which works a bit differently from Profile 7 on Blu-ray. Profile 5 is encoded directly from the 12-bit HD or master and doesn't include an HD or 10 base layer. This means it always preserves the full brightness and dynamic range of the original grade, matching the output of Profile 7 FEL discs. Unlike Profile 7, which can involve tone mapping the HD or 10 base layer to 600 or 1000 nits, Profile 5 doesn't go through that process. You can't tone map Profile 5 down to lower brightness levels without completely ray-generating the level 1 and the trim metadata. So, in practice, Profile 5 always reflects the full intent of the 12-bit master like Profile 7 fell. And although Profile 5 is technically still 10-bit, it uses a more efficient color space that makes it functionally equivalent to around 11.5-bit YCBCR. That puts it very close to the visual quality of 12-bit fell and both formats already exceed what today's consumer displays are fully capable of reproducing. Up next in this video, I'll be showing a direct comparison between HD or 10 and Dolby Vision using over 40 Blu-ray discs that were encoded with the HD or 10 layer cap to lower brightness. All the images were captured with a DSL or camera mounted on a tripod, with fixed settings in a completely dark room, to ensure consistency and accuracy across shots, as you'll see in the upcoming comparisons. Even high-brightness TVs like the LG G5 can benefit significantly from the Dolby Vision full enhancement layer on Blu-rays. Since my G5 is configured with a peak brightness target of over 2,500 nits, it can take full advantage of the restored 12-bit master that fell discs deliver. In these cases, the difference is clearly visible. Dolby Vision fell makes the image much brighter and more impactful compared to the capped HD or 10 layer which may have been tone mapped down to just 600 or 1000 nits during encoding. Now, on a lower brightness TV like the LG C2, which peaks around 800 nits, the difference would be more subtle. That's because even though the 12-bit image is properly reconstructed from the disc, the Dolby Vision tone mapping metadata will scale it down to match the TV's capabilities. In this case, 800 nits. So what you're really seeing in that situation is the difference between two tone mapping methods. One is HD or 10, using a static tone curve to handle, for example, a 1000 nit image. The other is Dolby Vision dynamically mapping a reconstructed 2000 nit or brighter signal. Even though both are limited by the display's peak output, Dolby Vision offer better tone mapping on low brightness displays. But on something like the G5, the benefits are magnified.